Hi friends, for your AE Genco TS, <coughs> the first topic in synthetic materials is elastic constants. Let us have some very important information about this particular topic so that you can score one or two marks from this particular topic. Young's modulus, the ratio of direct stress sigma to direct strain epsilon within the limit of proportionality is called Young's modulus. It is denoted by capital E. Capital E is equal to sigma by epsilon. Sigma is the stress and epsilon is the strain. The slope of line or part of stress strain curve. Yes, this is going to give, Young's modulus is given by the slope of the stress strain curve with stress drawn on the y-axis and strain drawn on the x-axis because dy by dx is equal to slope. Right. Young's modulus value for certain materials are, this is a very important information, friends. So, these values you must have always in mind. Steel is having 200 gigapascals, aluminum 70 gigapascals, brass 100 gigapascals, giga means 10 to the power of 9, pascal means newton per meter square, bronze 80 gigapascals, copper 120 gigapascals, and diamond 1200 gigapascals. In this, what you have to see is, you have to see the decreasing order or increasing order of these materials and kindly note them. Questions may be asked on that. Modulus of rigidity, it is denoted by C or N or G. The ratio of shear stress to the shear strain. Shear stress is denoted by tau and shear strain is denoted by <coughs> epsilon. So, C is the modulus of rigidity. It is the ratio of shear stress to shear strain. Shear stress is, uh, shear stress is responsible for change in the shape and uh, longitudinal stress is or normal stress is responsible for change in the size of a component or metal bar. Now, bulk modulus. So, when a body is subjected to like and equal direct stresses along three mutual perpendicular directions, the, ra the ratio of this direct stress to the corresponding volumetric strain is called the bulk modulus. Uh, Young's modulus is important for uh, uh, solid materials and uh, modulus of rigidity is also important for solid materials. But where the bulk modulus is very, very important for liquids. It is denoted by K and it is the ratio of the normal stress to the in mutual perpendicular directions P by volumetric strain epsilon V. P is applied pressure causing the direct stress and EV is the volumetric strain which is given by the ratio of the volumetric uh, change delta V by V. So, here is the diagram given showing you normal stresses on the six phases, okay, three directions. Lateral strain. When a structure is subjected to axial load, besides the strain in axial direction, there will be lateral strain of opposite nature in the perpendicular direction, in all directions, at right angles. Normally, if it is a two-dimensional, generally, uh, three-dimensional object we are going to take. So, if the applied load is in the x direction, uh, there is not only strain in the applied direction, load direction, x direction, also strain in the y and z direction, that is, which are normal to x direction. Similarly, uh, y, z, x and z, x, y respectively. Poison's ratio. When a bar is subjected to a simple tensile loading, there is an increase in length of the bar in the direction of the load, but there is a decrease in the lateral dimension, that is diameter, let us say. For example, we are having a round diameter, round bar of diameter D uh, and the length L. Then L will be increasing if the applied load is normal to a cross section which is circular and D will be decreasing, diameter will be decreasing. A decrease in the lateral dimension, that is the diameter, for example. Perpendicular to the load, the ratio of the strain in the lateral direction to that in the axial direction is defined as the Poisson's ratio. It is denoted by Greek letter mu. Let us see the Poisson's ratio for various materials. So, normally Poisson's ratio, most of the materials is going to uh, vary between 0.25 and 0.35. One new and unique material so far of interest only in laboratory investigations actually has a negative value of Poisson's ratio. That is if stretched in one direction, it expands in every other direction. This is called negative Poisson's ratio. Normally, it should contract in other directions, right? But if it is expanding in other directions uh, as compared to the applied load direction, then it is going to give what is known as negative Poisson's ratio. It is uh, negative Poisson's ratio is given by minus of lateral strain by linear strain. So, here is the diagram given, friends.
normally if it is compressed it should increase in the other direction latter directions then it is usual practice right uh, Poisson's ratio but here the behavior is something different and uh, opposite hence uh, it is given the negative Poisson's ratio the maximum possible value of Poisson's ratio is 0.5 it is mostly in most of the examination this is asked friends the maximum value of a Poisson's ratio is 0.5 for an ideal elastic incompressible material whose volumetric strain is zero right so this is once again a very very important information poison ratios for very very important materials is cork it is zero concrete 0.1 to 0.2 glass 0.2 to 0.27 cast iron 0.2 to 0.3 steel 0.27 to 0.3 this is a very very important material which you have to remember aluminum 0.33 once again it's a good material and uh, very important engineering material brass 0.34 gold 0.44 incompressible materials for example clay paraffin and rubber they have a poise ratio of 0.5 so please remember this data without fail you can get one question now we will go for the relationship between elastic constant ECK or EGK E is equal to 2 C into 1 plus mu mu is the poise ratio C is the modulus of rigidity and E is the Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity uh, C is the uh, modulity of uh, rigid, uh, rigidity modulus of modulus or modulus of rigidity and mu is the points ratio k is the bulk modulus e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so solving these two equations that means uh, uh, eliminating mu from first and second equations and getting getting mu from the first equation and uh, substituting in the sub, substituting in the second equation for example you got e is equal to 2c into 1 plus mu so e by 2c minus 1 is equal to mu substitute that, that into e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 into mu what is mu value e by 2c minus 1 so if you get e on the left side you are going to get on the right side 9kc by 3k plus c so e is equal to 9kc by 3k plus c or 9kg by 3k plus g accordingly whether you are taking g or c as the c or g as the modulus of rigidity. this is a very very important relation between relationship between e g k or e k c now there is the relationship between points ratio uh, Young's model uh, and uh, Poyen's ratio and bulk modulus and modulus of rigidity. So it is a very very once again a very very important relationship. Mu is equal to 3k minus 2g pi 6k plus 2g or if you are taking uh, c as the modulus of uh, rigidity then mu is equal to 3k minus 2c by 6k plus 2c. Now this is a very very important uh, 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 inequality for which you have to remember for all isotropic materials mu is equal to 0.25. So E greater than K, K greater than C. So E is having the highest value, K will be having next highest value and C will be having the least value. If mu less than 1 by 3, then E is greater than K and if mu is greater than 1 by 3, E less than K. So remember this information very, very carefully. In terms of bulk modulus K and the modulus of rigidity C, the Poisson's ratio is given by, just now we have seen the relationship, it is... 3k minus 2c by 6k plus 2c that means your option is c now so if you solve this e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu uh, he has here instead of c he has taken g as a modulus of rigidity and e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so equating the above two equations i am going to get 2g into 1 plus mu is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so solving for mu we are going to get 3 uh, mu is equal to 3k minus 2g by 6k plus 2g now there is a question for your practice the bulk modulus of elasticity that means k or uh, k of a material is twice its modulus of rigidity that means he is giving that k is equal to 2c or 2g the poisson's ratio of the material is it is given in the ies 2002 exam friends so just such type of questions and relationship between constants involving questions based on that are normally given you have to get the answer correct answer so here it is given k is equal to 2g so substituting in e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu and e is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu so equating 2g into 1 plus mu is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu substituting k is equal to uh, 2g that means 3 into 2g that means 6g into 1 minus 2 mu uh, solving gg will get cancelled and solving for mu you are going to get 2 by 7 mu is equal to 2 by 7 now here is one more important information very important information so we are having three types of materials basically isotropic material uh, orthotropic material and anisotropic material 
let us see the number of uh, elastic constants for these materials. For isotropic materials, the number of independent elastic constants are two only, E and mu, Young's more or less I and uh, Poisson's ratio. Now, for orthotropic materials, if the material has the three mutually perpendicular planes of elastic symmetry, it is said to be orthotropic. So, for this material, the number of independent constants is 9. Now, anisotropic material, what is this? If a material does not possess any kind of elastic symmetry, it is called anisotropic material okay, or allotropic material. For this, uh, there are 21 elastic constants. Okay, friends, I hope this information is very useful for your uh, TSAE Genco. And in the next video, we are going to meet with another important video for your syllabus topic. Let us meet in the next video very shortly.